I'm Marcel James with The Pulse. Recently, you've heard about a few of the threats to the supply of NMN, but there are a mounting, growing number of these threats, and I want to go over them today. I want to go over five of them and talk about some of the nuance. Some of them are things you would suspect and you already know about, but then number five is going to be kind of a surprise, I think, for some people when you really think about it and hear it for the first time. Um, the sales, first of all, of NMN have been growing exponentially. More people have been first time ordering NMN. And of course, NMN is a substance that people reorder very generally, as you know. So it is growing faster than the supply can keep up in some areas. And we are seeing some backorder situations continuing. But that's not the biggest threat. That's not among the biggest threats right now for the moment. But the sales are going up. So the supply and demand, supply has to keep up with demand and uh, some of these things are weighing in on that causing some uncertainty in the market which of course corporations businesses never like uncertainty the first threat to nmn is probably a big surprise the way i'm, I'm going to position it to people but when you think about it i think it can cause problems for nmn as a supplement keep in mind these are threats to the nmn supply as a supplement uh, human clinical trials now, why in the world would that be a threat to NMN? We all need human clinical trials. I want more human clinical trials. And as a matter of fact, the recent human clinical trials have shown very positive uh, results with NMN in humans. Uh, they've had more energy, their NAD levels have gone up, and uh, people have been experiencing less COVID sy symptoms taking NMN. So there are a lot of positives coming out of these human clinical trials. And as we get more and more positive mice data, as with the recent uh, reversal of retinal damage in mice, and as that starts to cross over to humans as well, we're gonna see even more and more positive news about NMN in treating various illnesses. But there's the rub, therein lies the rub, as they say, because the FDA FDA's definition, as I've stated in another video, uh, is for if an ingredient can be used to treat an illness, then it is a drug. And so these human clinical trials might actually begin to work against us, even though some of these are even funded by actual supplement companies. It's, it's really another indication that the way we're treating supplements does need to change. It's way past time and the timing's never been better. Threat number two to the NMN supply as a, as a supplement is Dr. Sinclair. Now we've talked about this ad nauseum. I'm not gonna get into um, how I disagree with David Sinclair when he's trying to turn NMN into a drug. Um, there are some reasons that I have coming up why I think that's a bad idea for NMN and just in general, and the timing is really bad for that. I mean, if anything, Dr. Sinclair's timing is just really, really bad for a multitude of reasons. But there's another reason that uh, David Sinclair is a threat to NMN as a supplement, and that's, that has to do with uh, addition by subtraction. Uh, there has been no bigger advocate of NMN as a supplement than Dr. Sinclair. And now he's no longer on that side of the fence. He's no longer promoting buying NMN supplements and taking those. He'll point to his book and say, well, those are the supplements I take, but he's no longer even naming NMN by name, and he is promoting his NAD-boosting version, uh, which is MIB-626. He's, he's stopped using that term as well, but he's no longer talking up NMN in supplement form. He said in his letter it may still remain available, but in a recent video interview with Peter DeMondes, he never even mentions NMN, which is not a good development for the wider use and awareness of NMN as a supplement, an effective supplement for aging people who want to maintain better energy and better focus. Um, so I, I really feel that he's become a double threat, um, both in the fact that he's trying to turn it into strictly an exclusive drug and the fact that he's no longer a proponent. Also, it's not good for the NMN community. Um, certainly, I'll keep talking about it, but I'm a very small channel, as you know. Uh, but myself and others are just going to have to pick up as much as we can that mantle of being the NMN guys. 
And now the third threat to NMN is a pretty obvious one. It's the FDA. The FDA has stated in a letter that NMN can no longer be sold as a dietary supplement. Now, they've not taken action yet, but it's sort of this lingering threat that we're sort of all in limbo, and this is causing further uncertainty, as I mentioned. And now some manufacturers are stating that uh, you must companies have to prepay for their NMN supply, which is very untenable in the long term to conduct a business that way. Plus, if you want to test the NMN, you want to take a small batch. You don't want to prepay for your whole order. And they are reducing, in some cases, their manufacturing capacity for NMN and switching to other ingredients. Um, but that's, that's one of many problems that the FDA is causing. Their actual rules, their guidelines that govern supplements, until those are changed by Congress, they remain a threat to all supplement. The supplement industry is going to have to push back constantly with various substances, I fear, based on what's happened over the last couple of years with NAC and now NMN. We're going to have to Pool, to, pool resources together, and I'm talking about we as the supplement world, right? I, I don't work with a supplement company. I'm not a supplement company. But supplement companies, it's certainly, let's, let's put it this way, it's going to impact us in the sense that we're not going to see prices go down for NMN based on all of these pressures on the substance. And I fear it, prices could even rise at some point when supply uh, dries up even more. So the FDA is certainly a threat to NMN as a supplement. Uh, number four threat is Big Pharma, and this also has a couple wrinkles to it. Uh, Big Pharma probably is going to step in if the FDA and David Sinclair are successful at stopping NMN as a dietary supplement. You've got to think that to fill that market, and Big Pharma is very aware, these companies are very aware of the market of NMN and what it represents, and if they were to get control of that, I think it'd be a great buying opportunity for some big pharmaceutical company that's certainly not going to lower the cost. Because if they pay big money for Metro International Biotech and they're able to market NMN after two, three year period, uh, they're going to charge for it. They're going to want to recoup that investment. And then they're going to advertise and they're going to promote it with doctors and all this costs an excessive amount of money that is really counterproductive for the marketplace when it comes to consumers because consumers are already getting what they feel is their money's worth and the prices were coming down up until now. So now with these pricing pressures and these availability pressures and threats and uncertainty, it's not good for consumers. Um, the number five threat is uh, also related to big pharma in a way actually, but China. And that's the surprise threat, I think, to a lot of people aren't really looking at that. Nobody's really talking about uh, the implications of what's going on in China, both in the short term and the long term. In the short term, we've got a massive COVID outbreak. Uh, irony there is NMN could be used to treat some of that COVID, and certainly the long COVID symptoms especially, but I also found that it helped some people prevent COVID, or at least more serious versions of COVID. So what's going on in China can't be good, and there's a significant outbreak right in Shanghai right now, which is a direct threat to NMN supply because a lot of us get NMN from a Shanghai company. That's where it's coming from, uh, the NMN that we buy, a very great form of NMN, a very pure tested form, a stable form of NMN, and now COVID is threatening. This year, we could see supply disruptions immediately, even... Uh, precluding the FDA and David Sinclair's efforts. Like this could become a bigger threat than the first three or four threats. So China is something to really keep our eye on in the short term, in the immediate term, how bad this outbreak is. You know, they're talking about maybe one to two million people dying uh, in, from this in the next year or two in China from this outbreak. And if people are dying, are you really going to want to rush off to work? So if you can't go to work, not only can you not make NMN, but any number of uh, supplies that we need for various components, uh, it, it's going to be a big problem. It's going to be a, a problem that threatens our economy in many, many ways. But for us directly, yes, this can very much threaten NMN, and it's something we need to keep an eye on. 
And I hope supplement companies start investing in manufacturing outside of China more going forward. Um, they've got a lot of costs on their hand. NMN's becoming very expensive to defend. They're going to have to fight potentially the FDA. They may have to lobby Congress. All of this costs attorney fees, counselor fees. All of this is going to cost money. And it's a shame that all of these pressures are going to land on supplement companies just to keep uh, NMN available. But hopefully... We can keep spreading the word. We can keep those sales increasing exponentially. Um, keep some supply of NMN is my suggestion. I'm not saying panic and I'm not saying overstock, but keep enough that you're comfortable that some of these disruptions won't impact you. Now, there's also a longer term threat in China. And if you look at Apple, they're moving their iPhone manufacturing to a large extent outside of China going forward. They're moving a lot of manufacturing over to India. As a matter of fact, in the next two years, they plan to produce 25% of their iPhones and that's just gonna grow. So that should be an indicator to companies who are manufacturing solely in China that it's a good time to start thinking about diversifying. Long-term prospects for China, well, wages are going up. They're already three times that of a typical worker in Mexico, and they're not as educated or qualified as the workers you can get in Mexico. So there are places like India and Mexico to look at when it comes to manufacturing. Uh, China is a threat to long-term availability and stability of the supply of NMN. Now, there are some things that the supplement industry collectively has already begun to do, which is to fund efforts to fight uh, the FDA and to lobby Congress, as I mentioned. So that funding effort and those plans are already in the works with many companies that I've heard from. So there's some good news there. And as I said, the sales increase is going to help matters as well because they know, okay, this is going to be profitable. It's worth fighting for. It's worth doing. So these are the multitude of threats to uh, what is my favorite supplement, what is many people here's favorite supplement, NMN. Um, I still remain hopeful and optimistic that things are going to turn out well, but we've got to keep our eye on some of these uh, flashpoints, if you will. These are facts, not feelings. Uh, these are opinions based on what's going on in the industry, what's going on with NMN, what's going on in the world. Stay tuned. I'll see you guys soon.